I would like to call the school board meeting for Tuesday, April 5th, 2022 for the Des Moines Public Schools to order. Ms. Rivera, could you please take the roll? Ms. Alonso Diaz. Here. Ms. Bradley. Here. Ms. Caldwell Johnson. Here. Ms. Knox. Here. Ms. Martirana. Here. Ms. Norris. Here. Ms. Sawyer. Here. Before we begin our first item of business, I first would like to welcome you all to our meeting. And this is actually new for us. We're finally going back to the old way of doing things. And so it's wonderful that we have a crowd for us tonight, that we are starting to go back to what seems like normal again. So all of our meetings will now be in person. So we invite the community to come to those. Any public forum comments that are made, those will also be made in person as well. But before we do get going with our um, school board meeting, I always like to check in with my board colleagues. This is something... Um, that is very important to me to make sure that we're ready to do our line of business. Uh, my colleagues' mental wellness is very important to me. So we take about 10 minutes in the first part of our meeting just to do a quick check-in before we start with our official business. So I will open it up to any of my board colleagues this evening. I'm always willing to start first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just briefly, I'm feeling tired. Um, I had a little shot of caffeine around <laughs> 3 o'clock, so I'm hoping that's going to keep me um, moving through this meeting, which I know it will. But um, also just really energized for future conversations. I don't know that I'm feeling tired, but I'm feeling um, just a little challenged, maybe, and uh, challenged by what we have ahead of us yet tonight and moving forward. But even beyond that, I'm challenged by the difficult decisions that we're going to have to be making as a board. And uh, I don't take that lightly. And, you know, I was tell people to walk a mile in my shoes because this is not an easy job. So I, up until just, wasn't the sun shining this morning? I felt like it was, maybe it wasn't. Um, spring is in the air, which is always great to feel a little sunshine on your face. I am feeling really grateful. Um, some of you know that I have two seniors and the Des Moines Public Schools has raised them to fly, and they are flying, uh, and they're flying fast, and they'll be gone in June. And I, um, so I'm feeling really grateful. The way I've chosen to approach this, as opposed to crying, which I'm probably about to cry, is um, just to say thank you. And so I've spent a lot of time thanking, you know, teachers, coaches, people from all around the world that have had a hand in raising them to be amazing men. Um, so I'm feeling really grateful, uh, and it's a great way to walk into a job like this, which is going to be tough tonight, uh, because you know that um, you've got great public schools that help ra raise great people. I, too, I am feeling... Oh, I'm sorry, Maria. Go, no. ahead. Go ahead. I, too, am feeling grateful. Um, I've had the opportunity to speak with many leaders over the past week, and... Um, I'm grateful for the time that they took to reach out and to have conversations and to help me better understand um, exactly what reality looks like in the district. So thank you all. I think you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, many people reached out and um, I am grateful for the knowledge they have provided um, and feedback. Uh, comments, suggestions. Um, we certainly, I certainly know that I'm not doing the work of staff and school buildings, principals, and it is much appreciated to hear from people that are doing the direct work. Um, thank you. So I'm feeling grateful, grateful for being here with everyone. Um, I will sum it up echoing your sentiments, feeling very grateful for all of the time that I spent visiting with so many um, 
administrators and leaders in our district over this last week. Grateful for how many people are here tonight. I think that's exciting for the future of our district, how many people care, um, and grateful to serve with a board that truly cares so deeply. So I agree, tough road ahead, but um, feeling motivated for and inspired by the future. Thank you all for sharing this evening. Um, I as well am feeling grateful, but I'm also asking for some grace from my board colleagues. I'm just dealing with some little minor health issues that have been impacting me, and I will try not to let that impact me for the work that we need to do this evening, but very grateful for your continuous support um, during this time. So thank you all for being patient as we checked in with each other, and we will now get going with the business at hand. So the first item of business is approval of the agenda. May I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda? Caldwell Johnson with approval. Mayor Toronto, second. We ha have a motion by Ms. Caldwell Johnson and a second by Ms. Mayor Toronto. Ms. Rivera, could you please take the vote? Ms. Alonso Diaz? Yes. Ms. Bradley? Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson? Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Martirano? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Ms. Sawyer? Yes. The vote is approved, 7-0. The next item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from our meeting on Tuesday, March 1st, 2022. May I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes? Sawyer, move approval. Norris, second. We have a motion by Ms. Sawyer and a second by Ms. Norris. Ms. Rivera, could you please take the vote? Ms. Alonso Diaz? Yes. Ms. Bradley? Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson? Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Martirano? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Ms. Sawyer? Yes. The vote is approved 7-0. The next item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from our special meeting on Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022. May I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes? Norris, motion to approve. Caldwell Alonso, Johnson, second. second. I believe that was Nor Ms. Norris. Um, we had a motion by Ms. Norris and a second by Ms. Caldwell Johnson. Ms. Rivera, could you please take the vote? Ms. Alonso Diaz? Yes. Ms. Bradley? Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson? Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Martirano? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Ms. Sawyer? Yes. The vote is approved 7-0. The next item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from our special meeting on Thursday, March 10th, 2022. May I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes? Alonso, so moved. Norris, second. We have a motion by Ms. Melanzo Diaz and a second by Ms. Norris. Ms. Rivera, could you please take the vote? Ms. Alonso Diaz? Yes. Ms. Bradley? Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson? Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Martirano? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Ms. Sawyer? Yes. The vote is approved, 7-0. Next item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from our special meeting on Tuesday, March 15th, 2022. May I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes? Norris, motion to approve. Martirano, second. We have a motion by Ms. Norris and a second by Ms. Martirano. Ms. Rivera, could you please take the vote? Ms. Alonso Diaz? Yes. Ms. Bradley? Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson? Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Martirano? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Ms. Sawyer? Yes. The vote is approved, 7-0. Next on the agenda is public forum. We provide speakers at the forum an opportunity to address the board for up to three minutes regarding items that are not on the board agenda. If anyone wishes to speak during this forum, please email rosa.rivera-hernandez at dmschools.org. Speakers will be called individually and we ask they please state their name and address prior to providing comments. Students and minors do not have to provide their addresses. Guests of the board are encouraged to speak to matters relating to programs, services, and operations of DMPS. Please remember that Iowa law prohibits us from discussing specific employees or their job performance. Please avoid references to personalities or character attacks, as those types of comments do not contribute to the purpose for which this public forum exists. Thank you for your support of our school district. We appreciate your input. As a reminder to the board and public, this public forum is not a time for board engagement and discussion, as it is our obligation to discuss only matters posted in the public agenda for the sake of transparency and opportunity afforded to all community stakeholders. Matters requiring attention will receive appropriate staff and or board follow-up at a time after the meeting. Ms. Rivera, do we have any speakers this evening? Yes, we do. We have five. First up, I will call Ms. Jolene Prescott.
Okay. My name is Jolene Prescott, and I live at 3013 3rd Street. And uh, my children went to Finley and, and Harding and North High School. And now I have a grandson that is at Finley. Um, and I also have kind of a step grandson that is at Roosevelt. And the other day, he, he had been not going to class. So his dad went up there, you know, to make sure he was going to class. Well, he found his son. He was outside in the hallway watching a bunch of students fight. And my, the, the, the dad couldn't stay there because there were three different fights going on. I would never say, you know, I don't want a pipeline to um, prison, but I think we still need the presence of an officer in some of our schools. For one, we need to start early, too. We need to start with teaching kids expectations in elementary. And we teach those expectations in middle school. And then, by the time they get to high school, you know the expectations, also teaching kids how to solve problems and how to, how to work with others, how to um, take care of differences without others. But eventually, that comes down to the student. You can teach them and teach them. We can work with them. But eventually, there has to be a time when they are responsible for their own behavior. And I, I was a special ed teacher at Urbandale, and I realized that. At some point, they have got to take responsibility. And if they don't, then maybe it's time for the resource officer. So that's what I, I want you to continue what you're doing. I want you to continue teaching that kind of stuff because that lays the foundation. But we still need that presence there. And also, I think we need the presence just for plain safety. Now, I know I, know to, I, know, I go to a lot of um, meetings up at City Hall. And um, we, we have a police presence there. And I'm glad for it because sometimes... I don't feel real safe up there. But I'm glad it's there. We have to check in. We have to be safe there. And I think we still need remaining. that person there. Thank you. The next speaker we have is Chris Rankin. OK, we'll move on to the next speaker. We have Rose Green. Good evening. My name's Rose Green, and I'm a proud Roosevelt and Hanwalt parent and past president of the Roosevelt High School Foundation. The purpose of the Roosevelt Foundation is to celebrate the tradition and shape the future of our Roosevelt High School by advancing and supporting our students, faculty, alumni, and the overall community. Over the past two years, we've led the Roosevelt for Generations Capital Campaign. It was, the goal was to secure necessary resources to fund three critical projects at Roosevelt, a new synthetic turf field, a new track, and a reimagined library. Roosevelt students will benefit from a new safe track and field to use for football, cross country, track, baseball, softball, band practice, and physical education classes. We're grateful we could partner with Des Moines Public Schools to fully leverage the dollars that had already been allocated for the track. Des Moines Public Schools has been a great partner in this project, um, and la our last project is to upgrade our media center um, to support innovation and collaboration in a 21st century learning environment. We're very excited to report that we anticipate construction of the track and field to be cl completed this August, and we'll break ground um, for the, with the library at the end of the next school year so we have it ready in time for the 23-24 school year. I'm here tonight to ask the board to, consideration, to consider our proposal for requesting the new Roosevelt High School track and field complex be named in the memory of the esteemed Roosevelt graduate and Des Moines community leader, Randy Duncan. We believe Mr. Duncan's history of academic and athletic excellence and community leadership merits this recognition. I'd like to just highlight a few of Randy's 
um, a, Rand, a few moments in Randy's career. I believe you've all gotten our memo that um, expands on that. Um, Mr. Duncan was the first all-team, all, first team all-state quarterback for Roosevelt. He led the Rough Riders to an undefeated season and a state title in 1954. Mr. Duncan was heavily recruited and chose to attend the University of Iowa. Randy was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 97 and is truly an Iowa football legend. Duncan was named in 1958 as a Big Ten MVP. He was selected as a consensus first team All-American. He won the Grantland Rice Award, the Welter Camp Trophy, and finished second in the Heisman Trophy voting. Yet with all these accolades, Mr. Duncan's humility was ever apparent. After being selected as a Big Ten MVP, Mr. Duncan said, 30 there's, seconds remaining. There's nobody that knows any better than I do that this was all made possible by you guys here and the coaching staff behind me. I mean it. Just to be part of this ball club was all I wanted. Randy obtained his JD from Drake in 1963. He went on to found Duncan Green Law Firm in 93. He practiced law for over 40 years, was highly regarded by his peers. He mentored young attorneys and promoted civility and decorum in the practice of law. He was especially dedicated to the betterment and well-being of at-youth risks. He served as the president of the board for Youth Homes of Mid-America and also on the board for the Des Moines YMCA and YMCA camp. Mr. Duncan was married to Paula for 56 years. Together they raised their three sons in Des Moines, Jed, Matt, and Scott. Mr. Duncan passed away in Des Moines um, in September of 2016. In conclusion, we believe that naming this field is a fitting tribute to his legacy. This proposal is submitted by the 22 community members who've served on the Roosevelt for Generations Capital Campaign and also is supported by the Roosevelt Foundation Board as well as 50 donors who raised, raised in access a million dollars to honor Randy's memory in this way. We thank you for your consideration. Next, we have Stacy Schmidt. Stacy Schmidt, I live at 2418 37th Street in Des Moines. And I'm also a teacher at Lincoln High School here in Des Moines Public Schools. I wish to address concerns about the lack of diversity in district and building level administration and the culture and climate of DMPS toward our BIPOC educators. I firmly believe that these two subjects are directly connected. The last few months have seen a large amount of employee turnover at the highest levels of our district and buildings. Several building assistant principals and principals have left, high level curriculum and instructional personnel have left, and of course, our superintendent has announced his departure. As a teacher and community member, this is extremely concerning for a number of reasons. While I don't begrudge anyone opportunities that may lie elsewhere, it does make me wonder what the impact of the culture and climate of our district has on the decisions of these people to leave. And I hope that you're aware of the ripple effect of uncertainty and anxiety that this causes throughout all levels of the district. I hope that the board and other admin are taking this as an opportunity to reflect on practices and policies that have made leaving DMPS an attractive option for our leaders. The district has claimed that it wants to conduct a nationwide search for our new superintendent and other leadership positions. The questions I ask you to consider are, what does that nationwide search entail? What are the filters or criteria being used by our talent and personnel department to narrow the selection field? And what deliberate steps are being taken to ensure that the candidate selection process is as diverse and inclusive as possible at all stages of the hiring process? If you as board members do not know the answers to these questions, I strongly urge you to ask for them. DMPS has repeatedly stated its desire to recruit and retain staff at all levels that reflect the diversity of our student population. Yet we continue to see finalists for leadership positions at district and building levels that are overwhelmingly white. From March 23rd to the 29th, DMPS announced three new building principals. Not one was a person of color. I'm not questioning the qualifications or experiences of those who were hired, not at all. What I am questioning is how thorough the search process was and why we seem to fall back on internal candidates from an employee pool that is already not reflective of our community when we claim to want innovation and diversity. Additionally, 
On March 29th, high school assistant principal interviews were held. Again, with an eight-candidate pool that contained no BIPOC individuals and an interview team that was, again, overwhelmingly white and male. I want to be clear. My purpose is not to point fingers at candidates or interview teams, but to question the process that leads to a candidate even receiving an interview in the first place. There's an old saying, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. Current leadership vacancies leave this board and the district with a choice. We can continue to adhere to practices and policies in place and disingenuously wonder why our staff does not reflect our community. Or we can seize the opportunity to change those practices and policies to better reflect our mission and vision. This is how DMPS becomes the model for urban education. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Shelley Scuster. My apologies, Scuster. Shelly Scooster, 6520 Forest Court in Windsor Heights. I'm the mother of four DMPS elementary students, and I'm here to ask about what our district is budgeting to address our literacy crisis. First, I want to thank two board members in particular, Jackie Norris and Maria Alonzo, who have been so responsive to my concerns and suggestions, as well as conversations that I've been having since I ran for District 1 in the fall. Thank you both for taking your roles seriously and listening to constituents. For years, my husband and I have been fighting for our oldest child to learn how to read at school. Now we spend approximately $10,000 a year for her to receive the specialized reading and spelling instruction that she needs. It should not have to be this way. When our child was four years old and enrolled at a DMPS half-day preschool, she learned how to read by looking at pictures and guessing what the words said. Her teachers called this a reading strategy. But researchers know better. Science tells us the whole looking at the picture and guessing what the word says next to it is actually a harmful strategy. It's a crutch that hundreds of our young students learn and depend on here every single day. Now, it may not seem like a big deal, looking at pictures to read a book, it's exciting for kids. And up until a few years ago, I probably wouldn't have thought it was a big deal either. But what happens as the years go by and those pictures and illustrations go away? Let's say you replace picture books with chapter books. Do you know what happens? I'll tell you what happens. You have a bunch of third graders who don't know how to read. You have seen our SMART goals. You know that less than half, less than half of all of our third graders know how to read. Research tells us that 95% of kids are capable of learning how to read if they receive the appropriate instruction. We are missing a foundational skill. The fact that we have less than half of our third graders reading should be an emergency. Yet I still don't know what our district is doing to address it. I submitted a question in the virtual budget forum online, but for some reason my question was never published and never answered, so I'll ask it here. What part of our district's budget are you allocating to interrupt the literacy crisis that we have right now? Yes, we have curriculum that aligns with the science of reading. We have curriculum that is evidence-based. It looks really great on paper. But the reality is it's not being used with fidelity in our classrooms. We need reading coaches in every single building. Our teachers need time and compensation for training. They need high-quality decodable books in their classrooms provided by the school district. We need universal screening for dyslexia in grades K through two because when we uplift the most struggling readers, we uplift, uplift everyone. We need principals and building administrators trained in the science of reading. And in a district our size, we certainly need at least one person enrolled in the dyslexia specialist endorsement program offered through the Iowa Reading Research Center. We cannot continue to experiment with literacy in our district what are we doing to correct this ship before it completely sinks? I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you. 
Those are all the speakers that we have. I'll go ahead and call again Chris, if you're in the room. Thank you all for addressing the board this evening. Again, I'd like to reiterate that if there's anything that needs um, follow-up, that will be done by the appropriate staff or board. Next on our agenda are the consent items. We allow any person the opportunity to speak to the board for up to five minutes following the presentation of an agenda item. If anyone wishes to speak to an agenda item, please email rosa.rivera-hernandez at dmschools.org. Remarks must be germane to the agenda, and we ask that you avoid reference to personalities and character attacks as those types of comments serve no productive purpose. We appreciate your input. As a reminder to the board in public, the board will not engage in discussion or deliberation with the speaker regarding comments made to agenda items. Discussion and deliberation will remain among board members and the board at the board table with speakers' comments informing said discussion, deliberation, and determinations as deemed necessary. Ms. Rivera, do we have any speakers this evening? We do not. Ms. Alonzo Diaz, I believe you have the consent motion. I do. I move that the board approve the consent items in accordance with the recommended action for each item on the consent agenda, including bills previously authorized, certified, and approved for payment by the board secretary in the amount of $20,658,325.76 and procurement card transactions in the amount of $427,201.03. We have a second. Martirano, a second. second. We have a motion by Ms. Alonso Diaz and a second by Ms. Martirano. Any discussion or questions? Ms. Rivera, could you please take the vote? Ms. Alonso Diaz. Yes. Ms. Bradley. Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson. Yes. Ms. Knox. Yes. Ms. Martirano. Yes. Ms. Norris. Yes. Ms. Sawyer. Yes. The consent items are approved 7-0. Next on the agenda are our action items. First is D1, approval of contract for interim superintendent. Superintendent Ahart, would you please introduce the matter? I recommend the board approve the contract for interim superintendent for Mr. Matt Smith. May I have a motion and a second to approve item D1? Caldwell Johnson, move approval. Alonso second. We have a motion by Ms. Caldwell Johnson and a second by Ms. Alonso Diaz. Any discussion or questions? Ms. Rivera, could you please take the vote? Ms. Alonso Diaz. Yes. Ms. Bradley. Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson. Yes. Ms. Knox. Yes. Ms. Martirano? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Ms. Sawyer? Yes. The vote is approved 7-0. Second item is D2 tentative agreement between Des Moines Independent Community School District to Des Moines Education Association Teachers Comprehensive Agreement, March 29, 2022. Superintendent Ahart, would you please introduce the matter? Yes, I recommend the board approve the attached tentative agreement between Des Moines Public Schools and the Des Moines Education Association, which was just recently ratified by the uh, Education Association. May I have a motion and a second to approve item D2. Martirano, move approval. Sawyer, Norris. second. We have a motion by Ms. Martirano and a second by Ms. Sawyer. Any discussion or questions? Ms. Rivera, could you please take the vote? Ms. Alonso Diaz? Yes. Ms. Bradley? Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson? Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Martirano? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Ms. Sawyer? Yes. The vote is approved 7-0. Next on the agenda, we have other items. First item is E1, personnel recommendation, receive and file. The next item on the agenda is E2, Personnel Recommendation Action. Personnel Recommendation Action on Superintendent's Recommendation to Terminate Continuing Teaching Contract. Superintendent Ahart, would you please introduce the matter? Oh, 
I recommend that the contracts for HM and KS be terminated effectively immediately for the reasons that were set forth in the superintendent's notice and recommendation to, to terminate. I have a motion and a second to accept the superintendent's recommendation. Aldwell Johnson, move approval. Sawyer, second. We have a motion by Ms. Caldwell Johnson and a second by Ms. Sawyer. Ms. Rivera, could you please take the vote? Ms. Alonso Diaz? Yes. Ms. Bradley? Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson? Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Martirano? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Ms. Sawyer? Yes. The vote is approved 7-0. Next on the agenda, we have items of privilege. Do we have any board members that would like to share anything this evening? Please join us for this weekend's CLAP meeting, Saturday, 9 a.m., virtually. You can sign up on our website. I would just also lift up that this week is the week of the young child, and so for all of our early childhood educators, uh, thank you. Well, thank you for all of our educators, or to all of our educators, but especially those working with our little, little ones. That is important work and, you know, really helps them come to school ready to learn. So thank you. I would just also like to uplift that uh, Ms. Rose Green did approach the board on the naming of Roosevelt's track after Randy Duncan. I will need three people to serve on that naming committee. Ms. Martirano, not to put you on the spot, but I'm hoping that you can be one of them. And then if we could get two more board members that would volunteer for that as well. I would. I will. Okay. One more. I will. Okay, so I have Ms. Alonzo Diaz, Ms. Sawyer, and Ms. Martirano. Thank you very much. I will now turn it over to Superintendent Ahart for the superintendent's report. Yes, I just want to recognize the staff and administration of East High School, um, our public safety department, and the leadership at Central Office for how expeditiously and professionally they responded to the tragedy of a few weeks ago, um, and recognize um, that all of our schools have a heightened awareness of the, the, what feels like overwhelming gun violence in our community right now. Um, we need everybody to stay on top of things and we need our entire community to really to come together and do what we can um, collectively um, to get firearms out of our students' lives. Um, there, have, there were reports over this last week, um, overnight, near school properties where multiple gunshots um, were reported. Um, you've all read about the, the drive-by shootings that happened off campus um, at various locations. This is really uh, a critical point in our community right now, and it's time for everybody to pay attention, to come together and collectively send the message that this is just not an acceptable environment to be raising our children in, whether they're on campus or off. So thanks for uh, the really professional response of our team, and um, again, our sympathies go out to, to the families who were very, very violently impacted by the incident. Thank you, Superintendent Ahart. And for all of you joining us, this does not happen very often, so we'll put it in the record books. I am adjourning the meeting at 6.07 p.m. We will move shortly into our work session for fiscal year, 20, fiscal year 2023.